The dynamic drive capability of modern EV engineering really is starting to see, we're seeing it in our customers already going, well, gosh, I kind of feel like where ICON used to represent, you could have the best of modern and vintage and internal combustion space. Now people are like, well, I can have the performance of my Tesla, but the character and uniqueness right, right. of vintage. So I, I think that's going to translate quickly. Yeah. I just worry because the EV science is moving so quickly. I've always been proud to recycle or upcycle vehicles that many think are already at the end of their usable life and make something that can last for decades more. Yeah. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This is an episode of, well, things aren't always what they appear to be. This appears to be a 1949 Mercury built by the Ford Motor Company. It is a 49 Mercury, but it's been redone by Icon Motors. Uh, Jonathan Ward, a good friend of ours, he started this business oh, not quite two decades ago, let's say, and has been extremely successful building these cars. They're basically brand new cars underneath. On the outside, they retain the patina, if you want, of uh, a derelict automobile. This one is a really fascinating deep dive for him. Jonathan, come on in. Jonathan Ward. Good to see you again, my friend. You too, Jay. Yeah, well, last time we saw you was with the uh, Hudson. With, yes, uh, yes. We had Sebastian Mascalco, and you brought the... Merck, I uh, know the, the Hudson. The Hudson Hornet. Yeah, yeah. The other famous lead sled. Yeah, that time. is, this, this is sort yeah. of the symbolic of that era, the sort of fast back and very yeah. cool. Yeah, very nice. That one had, would have the alligator interior. Yeah, right? that one I did all the hand dyed crazy alligator yeah, interior. Yeah. In. Well, before we go into it, let's pop the hood and show people what we have here. And I think even then they'll be confused. They will be. There's a, actually from the factory, a hood release cable this early. Oh, okay. It's pretty That's, wild. Oh yeah, here it is. Well, the Mercury was a little more upscale Ford. Not quite a Lincoln, yeah. but a little better than a Ford. Yeah. It was interesting, too, how much effort they put in to making it unique and not just a parts bin Ford mashup. Right. You know, the tooling for the body and most of the interior, all of it was dedicated to Merck and uh, such a great design. All right. Now, when one looks at this initially, you're thinking that's got to be some kind of big block 429 or 428 Ford or Chevy crate motor, but it's actually electric, isn't it? It's yes, two, sir. It's, it's two motors, isn't it? Yeah, it's dual electric motor, transmissionless design. But one thing that I wanted to make sure to do is when like the old school gearhead dude walks up to the car and hears it's an EV or worse yet lifts the hood and there's some generic black box with neon underglow lights, they immediately write it off and walk away. Right. So I've always, like you, loved all the vintage speed equipment, and I wanted to keep that SoCal hot rod vibe and still make it identify with old school hot rodders. So, so I designed all this nonsense, but it's actually housing several of the batteries in the full array, as well as the controllers and some of the cooling network. So we have two engines mounted Back to back? Not here though. Actually, the engines are where your tranny used to be. Okay. And they're they're back to back, directly in line with the drive shaft. This is all controllers, some of the batteries. I see. And some of the cooling network. Oh, okay. So you get a little bit of weight distribution with your engines further back. Yeah, and then to deal with the range needs and to improve weight distribution. Now there's more. There's an array of batteries back here, directly okay. over the rear axle. So your engine is where? Under the rear seat here? No, it's pretty much right where the tranny used to be, right, right where the old three-speed was. Yeah, they're nice and compact, and they pack a punch. Now that transmission tunnel is bigger than normal? No, sir. The same thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah we had zero body mods okay. on the trans Well, that is a compact enough. miner. What yeah. kind of power are you getting out of those motors? Uh, just under 500 foot-pounds of torque combined, right. um, and we run them full-time combined. And then, to me, so many electric converted vehicles they're always making it as easy as possible. So you got a little spud plate and you keep your three speed or umpteen speed. Right. Most of which gears are worthless. So I really wanted to focus on the engineering with this to step it up a bit, both by working with AEM on the management network for thermal management, which most people aren't bothering with. And what's the point of a tranny? 
This thing's like a freight trainer, just push, 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 right. push, and no shift points. So you've got a cooling system, which is to cool what, the batteries? Well, it's serving a lot of duty. It, it's a massive, like, 18-wheeler based AC mm -hmm. compressor, but it is independently managing the thermal requirements of the controllers, the motors, and the batteries, okay. plus the human climate control. Okay, so the cooling fluid, is it what, glycol and water? Is it like uh, Evans Cool? What We're using it? the actual refrigerant plumbed through a, oh. basically a glycerin that is going through chill plates. So that then gets distributed. Like 134, that kind of mm -hmm. deal? Okay, mm -hmm. oh, I see. Oh, I see how that works. So oh. it's like chill plates, and then the fluid travels between those chill plates and then gets distributed. But okay. the weird thing is, is like the thermal spikes and cycle needs of a motor versus a battery versus a controller, they have nothing to do with one another. Right. So it was an hour eating, drove me nuts. So how much refrigerant are you running? How many pounds? Is it massive? Do you need a huge amount? Or is it really just an air conditioning system times two? Yes, it's the latter. Right. It's really not a crazy high poundage need. We right. just needed the capacity to distribute, which is why we went from the to the 18 wheeler world versus like a good old fashioned sand in New York. Right, so you use the same refrigerant to run your air conditioner as yeah. well. Yeah. And does that work as a heater as well? Nope, you have to have an electric heater oh, to get that to I'm work, gonna right? I was going to say, yeah, there's no heat coming That's out the thing, man. There's so many people look at EVs, especially as more traditional ice guys, right, and go, well, gosh, I don't need a cooling system, a radiator, an exhaust system, a clutch. It's going to be so much simpler for electric. All I'm going to need is what they had on their RC car. Right, right. At the end of the day, the reality yeah, check is significant. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more complex. Um, and this does make a lot of heat. Not really. It's, it's not that it gets that hot. In fact, I'd argue its normal thermal range is not higher than that of a spicy V8. Right. What is unique to electric is how quickly you have thermal changes. Right. Okay. And managing that efficiently is a whole different can of worms to get down pat. Okay. Now, the way I can see through that, it's not a radiator, is it? Is it a condenser? No, it, it actually is still a radiator. If you look yeah. down low, there's a true condenser, but these okay. are, aren't really radiators so much as they're holding fluid and I designed it to look like a conventional radiator. Okay. But these are actually holding the fluid that gets run through the chill plates to then distribute through the components to manage the thermal. Okay. That's different than the 134 or that's 134? The compressor's network is 134, 134. but then that is, this fluid is distributed through chill plates cooled by the R134. And what is the fluid? The fluid's like a glycerin mix. Right, okay. Yeah. Mix with water. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay. So basically antifreeze. Yeah, in yeah, essence. Okay. Right, and good. then everything from here out is Honest Original Paint. It's a SoCal, one family owned Merc that we scored on good old Craigslist. Right. But from here in, all these inner fender structures are scratch built to kind of clean up the engine bay and hide all the complexity of the plumbing networks and electronics. Has the original family seen it since you No, you know, it's funny. I, that's one of my favorite things to do, but I, I tried reaching them and couldn't. The, the email got bounced back. No. The odd thing is, is even the clients who commission these crazy builds with me, I'd argue 95% of the time, if we have the opportunity to let the person who sold us the beat up old car get to drive it after we've geeked out on it, right. they get it more than anyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. Okay, very nice. Let's see, anything else under the hood? We obviously got your Willwood brakes, you've got your dual master. Yeah, we did Brembo's all the way around. I decided not to do any sort of assist or, you know, vacuum pumps are loud, hydro boost, there's really no network for it. And the regen brakes makes it so you don't even really need them. Right. Plus my, my Brembo's are asinine, they're like pro footballs. Right, so. okay. Other than that, just the aesthetics of the bright orange traditional safety, high voltage. And what size wheel is me. that? Right. Um, the wheels on this, so these are, are CNC'd and then forged aluminum. Okay. And they're 18s running the stock hub cap, but then a patina powder coat finish so they wouldn't jump the shark and right, right. try and stay vintage looking ish. All right, very nice and I love the Cable. Yeah, there. that's yeah. legit. That's old school. All right, let's shut this. Be careful, don't scratch it. Yeah, that's and, the fun with these. And there's your, uh, that's yeah. every vehicle you do. Our little lizard, he's How always somewhere. How many Icon somewhere. vehicles have you produced now? Uh, probably about three, over 300 in wow. total. You know, mostly we have to focus, we have to be grown-ups and focus on our production. 
Bronco, Thriftmaster, right. and Land Cruisers. The one-offs we do far less of. Um, they're so horribly inefficient, but they're my happy space. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great, it's great. Are you using the stock steering box? No, no. that's all gone. So it's electric rack and pinion right. to a breakaway tilt column done by our friends at I Did It, which I patinaed and aged down. I am in love with the stock steering wheel, so I left the original steering wheel right. and leather wrapped it and stitched it up. Up in front, there's a couple other cool things. The, yeah. These fog lights were kind of already on the car and beat up, but cool, and a proper glass lens. So we gutted those and put in modern optics, modern LED. And then there's two different charging networks. You can use the Chatham or you can use the fast charge like the Tesla. So you have one port. Oh, you've charged from the front right there, huh? Or you lift the factory fuel cap, and that's the fast charge port. Oh, OK. Which is kind of fun, because I didn't, I didn't want like some big lightning mark and yeah, obvious. Right. I wanted it to be a true surprise, the you know, tech you know, that's hiding. You know, what's funny. Good design is timeless. And this is really still a good looking car. They really are. You know, for a long time, remember the Audi TT kind of looked like this. Mm -hmm. And for the late 40s, early 50s, it's a nice clean design, not an overabundance of chrome. It's really smooth and I imagine reasonably aerodynamic probably, well, not too bad. Not too bad, but I mean, if we're looking for max EV efficiency, we wouldn't start with a 49 Merc. No. But I wanted heart and soul yeah. with the EV guts. The other thing is, you know, whenever I, I see these old cars, they always seem to be sitting lower in the back. And I just used to write that up to, oh, just worn out springs. And, you know, but yeah, we got our saggy leaves in the rear. <laughs> but then I was reading about designers, and I have like a, a 58 Imperial. And that was like this because they wanted to look as if the car was a rocket ship taking off into space. Yeah, that makes sense too. With like some of the aircraft inspiration was yeah. starting to bleed into. So they always have it sort of trans. going up, yeah. which to me always look weird. To me, I like it having it higher in the back, yeah. or at least level in the back. What I don't like, and you know, the tradition with these obviously has always been chop it, slam it, sled it. To me, you lose some of the grace and beauty of yeah. the car unaltered. It's like a 33 Ford. Guys do high boys and take the fenders off. It's like, but the fenders are a big part of the grace and beauty. Right, right. So we worked hard to, and actually we got quite lucky, found this with relative ease, to find one that wasn't chopped and wasn't altered. Yeah. And I even, when we worked with Art Morrison for this foil independent suspension, we worked really hard to get the stance where, yeah, it's, it's a little bit lower than stock, but it's, you're, it, it doesn't involve martyrdom. You're not hitting parking berms. It, right, it still right. still plays, but uh, it gives yeah. it that kind of UFO float vibe. I like when you can keep all the original glass. I love the split windshield, uh, rear windshield yeah. in the back. And then, yeah, like people remove and smooth out the trim, all the bright work. Uh, Come on, it's cool. Yeah. I, I did take some liberty with the glass and did a it's safety glass, and I did a, a deeper green temper than would have been stock. Right. Because I just kind of, I like that Well, they vibe. did have safety glass in 49. Yeah, yeah, it would have been about the time, yeah, but the, yeah. the, the coloration on it wasn't as distinctly Coke bottle green. Yeah, yeah. Well, very nice. So you haven't patina the body any more than it already was, right? Correct. No fake on the patina, no clear coat, no nothing. We just yeah. maintain it. Your products actually work great for maintaining patina. Cars. Well, I thank you. You're welcome. Well, I, so what do you do? Do you just put like radiant or one of those things? Yeah, radiant those? works well. Yeah. There's also a, a couple other like niches. A, yeah. It's a ceramic sealer. Yeah. We've been playing with some of the more costly ceramic products, uh, ceramic coatings on vehicles and doing yeah. interiors, glass, chassis components, solid axles on the four bys, but really on the patina paint, I like doing that, but it's quite expensive, and I think your product, as long as people keep up with doing it, does a fine job. Is this the original interior? Well, no, I geeked out on that. I mean, the seat frames are stock. The general layout and trim of the door panels are stock. But I, uh, I'm big into leather craft is one of my other obsessive uh, hobbies. And so I had Morin Giles, an uh, American leather company, tan this leather to my spec to match the patina and Well, tone. I would have guessed it to be the original interior. It looks yeah, great. Yeah, it's all brand new. It looks great. And, you know, modern closed cell foam. And that textile is actually from a company called Knoll, K-N-O-L-L, -L, that's more known for, like, fancy houses and yeah. office spaces. But the trick is you use their outdoor furniture lines. The durability and dry rub and UV and microbial ratings of that are way better than the automotive. 
and you can get into much more interesting styles. Cool. And what and what's in the trunk? Just filled with battery? No, it's a fully usable trunk. There's a false firewall in the trunk to hide the battery arrays and some of the coolers. You'll notice some out vents for the outside of the air being pushed away uh, for thermal management, but no, it's still a proper trunk. You know, that's why like we could have used the 800 array. I'm sorry, the, the larger Tesla array instead of the 85, but we wanted to stick with the 85 and keep the usability. The range we have is totally acceptable, oh, I see. Yeah, but you got a proper trunk. You can yeah, put all your crap great. in. Yeah. So, you know, we made all these panels for electronics and a master right. electric kill, and that hides the CNC braces for the vertical battery array. Those are the out vents for some of the cooling modules. How many watts? So we're 150 kilowatt motor controllers, right. dual ones from Reinhardt. Right. Then we're running the Tesla 85 kilowatt hour set up right. were uh, 225 H capacity, 400 volts. 400 volts. And next time, I'm thinking the 800's gonna become dominant. Yeah. As the, as the charging infrastructure develops. Right. And then now we can get into all wheel drive, part-time four wheel drive. And yeah, that's does, it. How does that open? Just a friction pull. Oh, I see. And this is, and this is your plug right here. Yep. Okay, very nice, your charger, very yeah. cool. But again, like we kept it more like vintage gas cappy vibe. I wanted to keep that styling alive. Very nice. Well, I think it's time to take it for a ride. Let's do it. It's so much fun. Oh, here's your key. Yeah, it's funny, the early Lincolns and Mercs, you couldn't lock the trunk and leave it unlocked. I mean, you can't close it and leave it unlocked. Yeah, no. Which I find highly annoying. Let's go. Give it a shot. More gas. Sounds like a gas engine. Yeah, a little bit. I really wanted to geek out and do one of those audio programs. You know, Brabus of all people had tech, and I think last I heard they walked away from it, but they were doing basically an app for electric cars where you could pick through a library of different yeah, engine seems, sounds, seems but it's so forced. Like yeah, it's, it's like just, walking around with a rolled up sock in your pants. You yeah, know? exactly. Just, <laughs> totally. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah. I mean, if you could have like an Allison or, uh, Columbo, like, you know, you could do, like, really interesting, but with no transmission, it's super fake because there's yeah, no shift no. point. So then yeah. what? You're, you yeah, can no. go to a flat RPM zone? No, it doesn't. I, I like whatever noise it makes, I like that noise. You know, I just drive those electric. Thank you. Yeah, the car collection is... Okay. How you doing, my friend? This is his. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Don't tell him it's an EV. He'll be heartbroken. Oh. How are you? Did you just power window that down or did you roll? No, power window. Really? Is that, is that cut? That didn't come on this car back then. No, this is this is all electric. This looks like something out of Andy Griffith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, power window is the least of its surprises. Yeah, yeah. And this is an Art Morrison chassis as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah he does most of your chassis. All of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love art. Have you ever have you ever interviewed or spent any personal time with art? No, I don't know him. Really. He's one of my favorite human yeah, beings. Yeah. Like he's up there with Bruce Myers as far as like yeah, yeah. just the, just like like Boy Scout goodness. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's yeah. such a kind man. I don't feel much of a vibration. Like... It's it's like that high fifties, low sixties, which is very yeah. like a nine mile range and then it clears up again. And we've gone round and round and round. And my only last thought is to do the OEM trick where they do those steel brackets with the offset rubber for harmonics. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of engineering that goes into defining everything down to the density and weight and offset <coughs> position that's beyond my resources. The client's like, he's like, I don't care. I'm not gonna, I'll just avoid that range and it's not that annoying when I'm in it. No, it feels nice. Oh, oh, is that park or spark? Spark. Why did it say spark? 
Well, never would have said spark yeah. back in the yeah. day, did it? Yeah. For ignition? Uh huh. I don't remember which ones. I think spark and one other are stock on the Merc. And then we machine copied the font and machined the rest. And I don't miss transmissions. It's not a wheel, is it? Mm hmm. No. So we hoped and thought initially. We used, we've got one of those old British harmonic tools, you know, where you got the mics and all the separate channels and the headphones. Such a great archaic tool. And uh, through using that, we, we did narrow it down to driveline. I'm probably eight grand in drive shaft efforts. I love the old steering wheel. Yeah, it's such a part of the charm. The optional wheel, was it 50, I think, not 49? Yeah. With the Mercury Man in the middle, sort of like, it's not cloisonné, it's like floating in an acrylic. Yeah, yeah. That one is so cool. But this one was true to the car, so I left it. And it gets significant charge pull back from the regen brakes, like surprisingly good. And you'll see it mapped on the gauges this, as it occurs. Housing. It's not bell housing. Is there a bell housing? Nope. To hell with all that. It feels like it could be a cover, no? Yeah, the motors are pancake to pancake. The other thing we thought was it could be an internal imbalance in the spooling yeah. of the electric motors. I think next time I'm just going to avoid that RPM range altogether by that reduction solution. But at first, everyone was doing just planetaries, which mostly came from the marine world, which really suck. They're so loud. Yeah. Take a marine gear drive and put in an electric car, it's like, ugh. Was this client looking for a 49 Merc? So it's, it's distinctly two different paths on these projects. Either a client has no clue, digs what we do, wants something unique and interesting, and says, what have you wanted to do? And I'll talk them into whatever stupid idea I've been dying to build. Right. Or in the case of other people, it's hyper, hyper specific, sometimes all the way down to the color. Right, like right. my dad or my granddad or the girl that got away or someone had this specific car and right. I want that, that vibe. This guy is one of my all time favorite clients. He's built several vehicles with us and he, like I, loved the 49 to 51 Mercs. Right. And he mentioned that very casually. And one of my hunters said, like, that same week, found this car on Craigslist and sent it to me. And I didn't have a buyer. I was trying to be a good boy and not add to my hoard, because Jamie's, my wife's going to kill me if I keep right. doing that. So I'm like, wait a minute. I just saw a really good one, sent it to him. And he's like, oh, yeah, let's build it. Now, and we were going to build it gas. I was going to say, with a 49 Lincoln, the which is basically the same car. Would that have worked too, or did it have to be a Merc? He and I prefer the Merc. I love the Hudson, yeah. the Merc, right. then the Lincoln. The Lincoln's a little overweight, a little too bulbless, in my opinion. But no, he was definitely a Merc cat right. from the start. But you know, we were gonna do more of the typical icon derelict formula with an internal combustion powertrain. Right. And he said, you know, have you ever thought about doing EVs? And I said, well, you know, at that point we had done two of them. And I told him my thoughts on it, which I felt that most of them that I've seen built are too simplistic to almost a safety liability. Yeah. And I said, I'd love to, and you're the right guy, but here are all the things I haven't seen done in retro EV builds that I would want to do that might take a lot of time and a lot of money or you gain. And he, good lucky, right guy. He was right, totally right, good. Yeah. Without the right clients, my stupid ideas just keep me up at night. Yeah, right, right. Were you constantly looking, stocking up on cool stuff that hopefully you can turn sometime in the future? Uh, I've stopped doing that because I end up with a pile, and frankly, our wait list for these one off builds is right. so long yeah, anyway yeah. that it's just at this point irresponsible. That being said, yeah. I've got a 41 Graham Hollywood, a 46 Hudson Big Boy, 47 Pontiac Torpedo, you know, teardrop, uh, 63 Volvo 1800, wow. and a couple other things Would in you ever my do heart. a uh, restoration? Stock resto? Yeah. No, that's kind of boring to me, and frankly, I think, pick a car, there's a guy who does just that car, right. who's gonna, be the guy you should go to versus, I think I only make sense when someone 
wants to keep the vintage vibe and nostalgia and, and right. feeling, but doesn't have any respect for the three on the tree, the drum brakes, the carburetor. I think that's kind of my happy zone. What do you think five or 10 years from now, the majority of business will be um, EVs or, or, or gas? EV. Yeah. I, I honestly anticipate an 80 to 20 split within a decade yeah. in favor of EV builds. Um, I just think it's it's a reality. It's where we're at in the global crisis is, you know, how much more proof do we need? I know. Now that being said, something yeah. like this, you know, if you're if you're, it's 100 miles a week or whatever, you can kind of go, well, I've got my Tesla, I've got this, I've got that. Right. But the dynamic drive capability of modern EV engineering really is starting to see, we're seeing it in our customers already going, well, gosh, I kind of feel like where Icon used to represent, you could have the best of modern and vintage and internal combustion space. Now people are like, well, I can have the performance of my Tesla, but the character and uniqueness right, right. of vintage. So I, I think that's gonna translate quickly. Yeah. I just worry because the EV science is moving so quickly. I've always been proud to recycle or upcycle vehicles that many think are already at the end of their usable life and make something that can last for decades more. Yeah, yeah. I worry as we get into the electric stuff, Jay, what I do with this car in five years, is it still relevant? Well, and I that's scary to I, me. I imagine that the only part that will change will probably be the battery technology. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to, I remember the first time I drove, I drove the Audi self-driving car, I sat in the passenger seat and went around the racetrack. And we opened the trunk and the <laughs> electronics were the whole trunk. I mean, yeah. just, you know, wires everywhere. Yeah. Next time we did it, it was this size. Yeah. It was an iPhone, you know, and it was amazing. So, I mean, what will happen is some of the, in the old days, this would have been all batteries. Now we have this, uh, the lithium crystal or whatever. Yeah, and I yeah. still have a back seat and a trunk, right. but I have tolerable range. Right. So I agree, I think the biggest revolutions will happen quickest in battery sciences. Right. I think beyond that though, controller networks, especially CAN-based controller and thermal managements, we're gonna see rapid evolution. But I've tried to, just like we do with our gas cars, I try and engineer them sub-module, meaning, if you needed to, this engine, these right. battery packs, they're modular elements you can remove. Right. And you could evolve and hemorrhage more money and update the tech. So we'll see. But I think that's, that's something that I feel like of all my buddy builders, I'm the only one who's fretting about it. And now, maybe I'm wasting myself. Now, is there any car you would go, no, I won't do that one. I don't want to destroy it. Won't, won't modify by doing my thing, right, gas right. or electric? Right, right. <sighs> no, with caveats. Like, if I found one that was already missing the original V12 or I mean, significant powertrain. With, with a beautiful Carrera 2 and says, 356, and says, I want to make this an EV. Uh, actually, I want to do a pre-A356, something awful. Yeah. But my counterpoint would be, I'd love to, but I want to autoclave a one-piece carbon body, right. or I want to superform single-unit, you know, superformed or hydroformed aluminum body, right. and I want to honor its original styling, but not sacrifice an original car. Right. I, I, I want to build it from the ground up, brand new, which would probably put me in court with Porsche. But I don't, no, that doesn't work, does it? They can't. Think. Uh, you know what, I wouldn't want to oh, find you mean, out. Oh, I mean if you built the body? Yeah, if oh, I did the body, you know, trade yeah. dress law is a tricky beast, so I'd rather avoid that or wait till they ask me to do it. Well, That'd you be damn call fun. it some other name, like a Rolex watch. You ever see yeah. those guys? <laughs> yeah. Or like the, during the Soviet Union, there was an area that renamed the, their state USA, so all their forged, like, products they used to sell. Have you ever seen them say Made in USA? Oh, yeah, Made in USA. Yeah. USA. Yes, this USA is good. Um, so, I don't know, like, I'd love to do a gull wing, but I think that's an example yeah, of a yeah, car yeah. that I wouldn't want to hack up. No, no. But I'd love to scan one and build it from scratch. So there, there is a line to be not crossed. Well, there was a guy building gold wing, gold wing replicas. Yeah. 
on like a 230 chassis. Yeah, there's a couple cats. There's one currently doing it. Um, and then there was that guy in the 90s, same cat, I think, that was doing the Ferrari California uh, spiders, right? But I feel like that more vintage kit car stuff created such a stigma to kit cars that I don't even want to use those right, words. Right, right. But the, the combination of reverse engineering technologies and low volume manufacturing techniques, it's a brave new world. The crazy yeah, stuff yeah. we can create today that even 10 years ago wasn't possible, that there's some, some pretty drastic concepts that uh, I'd eventually like to cook up from that approach. You know? Also, a lot of times when you're building from the original shell, there are a lot of constrictions. There are a lot of limitations, therefore yeah. compromises. Whereas if you're gonna tool the whole thing up, you can do the extrusions and everything. You can add three degree of rake, do minor subtle changes, you know, scrub off the drip rail and things that will improve right. a lot of aspects of the vehicle without jumping the shark. Uh, more efficiently than sitting there hand tailoring and retailoring a body again and again and again. We do have a 250 GTE in line to be built as an EV, and I'm looking forward to that. That's a single headlight? Yeah, I have the prettiest of the four doors, not the 330, not the Queen Mary. And that's going to be damn fun. And that we are going to rebody it. We're going to restyle it yeah. era appropriate. But there were a couple things that were kind of awkward on that body style. Well, Jonathan, thanks again. It's always a pleasure when you come by with these unique creations. I think you really started something that the whole industry is cop copying now. You know, most people would have stripped it and chopped it and shined it up and put it. But I mean, but keeping the classic look, I think, is really fun and it makes it. You can sit on the fender at a car show and not worry about yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Like my derelict in the 15 years I've owned it, all I've ever done is clean the windows. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, I appreciate your support over the years, my friend, and uh, I'm, I'm blessed to call this my job. Well, it's great. But it's the reason you still have a job is because you do it well. Yeah, worked out. Yeah, so. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, my okay. friend. Look forward to bringing you something nifty next. Hope you enjoyed this uh, 49 derelict. We'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>